For my latest Tour de Force Tours production, I went north of the border, Scotland, and I stayed overnight at Edinburgh. My prime objective was to climb Arthur's Seat, that is the extinct volcano just outside the city. Now, whereas normally I would use an Ordnance Survey map, the Explorer map, to uh, guide me, I picked up in my local shop the other day, Walk Edinburgh, and in here, amongst the map, yes, here it is, Holyrood Park, I've got a detailed uh, scenario of how to walk up Arthur's seat in Holyrood Park. But I'm afraid the weather didn't do all I had hoped it would do. And at one point I had to seek refuge, yes, guess where, in the cathedral, in St John's Cathedral in the Royal Mile. Anyway, let's have a look at the programme, shall we? See how I did in difficult situations. I went by train. What a surprise! I loomed up on the Lumo service, stand glass only, a one-way ticket with rail card costing just £39. The carriage soon filled up. It took 94 passengers, and the train was on time at Waverley Station, taking 4 hours and 26 minutes. I managed to get a great deal from LNER for the return journey, and you can guess the rest. What a great city view from Carlton Hill this is. The sense is greeted by this spectacular display of architecture. It was cloudy, but perfect for an interior, so I walked to St Giles Cathedral. Edinburgh is a victim of its own success. I was prepared to find the Royal Mile busy, but not the cathedral. General shots down the church were impossible, so it became a ceiling and stained glass window job, which it is noted, but the chantries were clear of people. Inside is a huge mix of light. I saved the roar and adjusted white balance in the comfort of my home. Saving to roar in this environment is essential, particularly with other people milling around, making it very difficult to come to an informed decision about technique. Creative photography is an equal mix of camera and software techniques, producing a luxury we did not enjoy in the days of film. While some decisions are made in post-production, it is still important to set the camera controls knowing what is to be executed in Lightroom or Photoshop. This applies to other mix of camera and software, but don't complicate matters by trying to over-control the camera. Don't either lock yourself into something that you cannot get out of. This all takes time and experience, and unlikely to work at the first attempt. I wouldn't be popular if I tried to use a tripod, even if it was allowed. The OM5 has amazing image stabilization, so you don't need one. It is a godsend here, especially when the 12 to 45 lens doesn't have a stabilizer. But look, it works! I stayed overnight, but the weather didn't improve the next day for Arthur's Seat, Edinburgh's extinct volcano. At least it wasn't raining yet. At 823 feet, it is not classified as a mountain, but it looks like one. It attracts many visitors, and whilst the path to the top is easy to follow, the final couple of hundred feet is on naked rock. On the descent, I happily admit to using my third leg, if you like, yes, by squatting down to negotiate a tricky patch before I fell down. 
It was not perhaps the best light for sweeping views, but it is clear when taking a panorama in any light include foreground and preferably with warm hues if you can find them. This will lift the colours and give essential depth to the vista. I got down before it rained, and being thoroughly knackered after my arduous climb, I relaxed in the first-class lounge at Waverley Station and promptly fell asleep, dreaming of sunny bygone days. I woke up in time for the 4.30pm departure, and my wish was granted. The sun came out. <laughs>